if you're a beginner, intermediate or advanced designer, you will find the six colour tools in today's video insanely useful. Uh, yes, we are going to look at that very soon, but first, I found a way or found a tool that actually helps us generate colour palettes whilst keeping in mind emotion. When choosing colour for our design projects, it's often important to relate those choices back to colour theory and to target emotional responses in our audience. Simply coming to Adobe Colour, which is totally free, and then head into the Explore option. Here we can type in relevant keywords from our brief and our client research, and this will help us decide on relevant colour schemes for our designs. As an example, if I'm designing a logo for a kind of modern tech startup, this colour palette right here would be possibly a great idea. In fact, I know I've seen such logos use this kind of palette before in the past when it comes to tech inspired logos. This easy method for choosing colours is so fast and yet yeah, it's pretty easy to do. Not to mention really highly targeted towards our audience if we've done the correct research. The best time to use this tool is probably on logo designs or branding projects or just when you want to evoke a very certain emotion to the audience. But what about this colour wheel here? Well, I got this thing a long while back on Amazon and I think it was about $10 or thereabouts, so not too expensive. But yeah, this single colour wheel actually does four very important things. Firstly, it shows us what colours we get if we add the three primary colours to another colour on the wheel, as well as adding black or white. So here, if we add red to blue, we get purple as the example. On the front here, it also shows us from white to black in grayscale as it's printed out, found along the bottom. And all of this is just really good to have when you're designing on your computer at your desk. But the really cool thing is when we go ahead and flip it over to the back. But yeah, firstly on the back, we can see in real time the complementary, the split complementary, and the tetrad colour schemes. It also goes into detail about analogous, triad, and other harmony good stuff. But if you look right here, we also have tint, tone, and shade for every single pure colour on the colour wheel. This thing is really handy for people who learn in a hands-on kind of way. It's also good to have at your desk when thinking about print design work. And it also kind of doubles up as a frisbee. Hmm, maybe not. The third tool that is used for colour and which designers probably should be using is built directly into Adobe Illustrator. When we come into the edit colors menu and go to recolor artwork, make sure the link icon is checked and then we can experiment by shifting the color scheme for a single design as a whole. You can of course unlink the selection to move around single colors, but if you want to make quick variations of a color scheme of an entire design, this is perfect for that kind of situation. Now here's the next tool for color use and it's called pigment. On the left, we can quickly change the brightness and saturation of the selection and then hop into something we like the look of. This is where this website really comes into use. You'll notice at the bottom, we have the hex code, the RGB values, but also the Pantone, which is really useful. And if we come up here and click more actions, we can see that we're able to download the color choice to three different useful file formats. We can create and control the direction of a gradient using just the two colors. And we can create a duotone image with those two colors, which is pretty cool. We just need to search in the search bar, find an image and apply the color as a duotone. And of course, we can also share the color scheme to somebody else. Now let's not talk about the other option on there, which was use a logo maker with those color schemes because the less said about logo makers, probably the better. But yeah, this tool is best used for those who want a quick and intuitive way to make a cool duotone color scheme for your next project. And the fifth tool today is a bit more advanced than the previous one. Paloton can look a bit confusing when you first open it, but here's the main use case for this thing. Now we can do conventional stuff for creating color harmonies on the wheel. And then off to the right, we have color options related to those harmonies with the hex color codes and so on. However, if we come up to the examples here, we can see our selected color scheme and how it might function on real life projects. 
Firstly, on a website design, which, yeah, let's be honest here, this webpage looks like it's straight up from the 1990s. But it is cool nonetheless, I'm sure you will agree on that. And then we can see it right here on some animated graphics as well. We can also export our creator palettes, which is always handy to have, of course. Moving on, we're going to look at a Photoshop trick that will save you heaps of time and will really help when using color. Now, I first heard of this from the great Pixinperfect some years ago. If we want to change the color of an obvious selection on our image, we don't need to use any masks at all. Just simply go ahead and make a hue saturation adjustment layer and then select this tool here and sample your desired color. Once selected, you'll notice Photoshop has actually picked it out at the bottom here, which then means we can just go ahead and change the hue of the selection really easily indeed. And of course, that's without using any masks. Now, if you haven't got enough color goodness from today's video, you can always click the video on screen now, which will provide more educational content. But until next time, guys, design your future today. Peace.